our show uh, for this Wednesday, the third Wednesday, Issues and Challenges in today's fire service. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, and we're hanging out with the boss, our good friend Chief Bobby Halton, Editor-in-Chief of Fire Engineering Magazine, and uh, our Education Director and Grand Poobah, if you will, of the Fire Department Instructors Conference, <laughs> FDIC. And we're joined today by uh, some of our, our very good friends at Columbia Southern University, CSU, and you know, if you know me, they're very special in my heart. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, training and education, um, uh, the impact it has on those uh, that you serve, and ultimately yourself. And uh, by the way, before we move forward, if you have any questions today, uh, fire them off uh, uh, to us on Twitter, and we'll do our best to uh, get as many as we can answer for you. Make sure you add hashtag FE Talk, hashtag FE Talk. Uh, and again, uh, one more thing, don't forget to catch our roll call tips at FTIC.com too. We've got some great stuff. So Chief Hall, welcome. I can see some of my very good friends there. Um, if you want to go around the room, I know the president, the vice president, the vice This is like, this is pretty cool. I mean, we got a lot of like, you know, presidents and vice presidents and all that stuff. Pretty cool. But uh, uh, if you want to go ahead and introduce our folks, and uh, that way I'm not missing anybody. I think I've got everybody on screen. Great. Well, the person that probably most everybody's looking at, the, the only, <laughs> the only non-ugly mug. <laughs> The rest of us look like the first row of the third district court. This will be our lawyer. Oh my. So this is Chantel Cooley, and she is vice president of Columbia Southern University, and she's a, a great friend and a great educator, and she'll be talking a little bit about her story and, and what she does and, and how she approaches education and the fire service, which is a huge issue to me. Um, and and I, we're going to delve into that. Also, Ricky, remember we need to remind everybody that the call for presentations for FDIC closes Friday. So if you want to teach, please get your, your paperwork in so that uh, you don't miss the deadline. So Friday, close of business, we have to have your submission or you're out of luck. There's, we do not accept any late submissions, so uh, please get your paperwork in. To my uh, left-hand side is the president of Columbia Southern University, Robert Mays, and Robert's uh, uh, dad actually founded the school, and Robert's going to tell us a little bit about the history of the school and, and how it came into being, which would, you know, 93, right? Yes. You know, in 93, the only two people on the internet were Al Gore and his dad. <laughs> so, you know, we, serious, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, that's, uh, you know, nowadays we take all this gadgetry for, for granted because it's so pervasive in our lives, but it's a relatively new phenomenon in the course of, of time. And then a man who needs no introduction at the end of the table, my good friend Billy Hayes, and Billy Fire Chief, PIO, DC, State, uh, 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 not Fire Marshal, you were the uh, State uh, Director of Public Direct Education. Pub Pub Ed for the great state of uh, Georgia and uh, wrote the chapter on public education in the Fire Chief's Handbook, available from Fire Engineering Books and Video at a very reasonable price. <laughs> did, a, did a great job. It's a, it's a great uh, a chapter and uh, uh, before we start, a little bit of background about what Columbia Southern does. You can get online educational classes here. These people are just the salt of the earth. I would trust them with my life. I've trusted them with my family, and, and uh, absolutely some of the most trustworthy and, and um, um, passionate people I've ever had the great pleasure to associate myself with, and um, consider them to be close personal friends. And, I want them to come on the hangout with me today, and it was a, what's a hangout? And I said, <laughs> we hang out. It's it's uh, it's basically like having dinner without the food, yeah. and uh, but you just have a conversation. So I, I wanted uh, to to start this morning, Ricky, if it's okay with you, with Robert just telling his story, and it's a great story, and I think that firefighters we love stories. I mean, and, and trust me. Every fire I've ever gone to has gone out, except that thing on Kennedy's grave, and I don't know what went wrong there. But we tell fire stories all the time. Our, li our life stories are the, the fires we've gone to, the departments we've worked for. But your life story is a little bit different, but I think nonetheless deeply <coughs> entrenched in the fire service for many, many good reasons. So if you wouldn't mind, just kind of tell everybody who you are. And, and how Columbia Southern came into being and how you ended up as the president. Yeah, sure, sure. It's, it is an interesting story. So back around 1988, my family um, 
you know, then Chantel here, of course, introduced my wonderful sister, just to make sure you know that's clear to everybody. Uh, we we moved to Alabama to start over. Well, in Alabama, Dad, you do have to identify people as your sister before you introduce them as your wife. <laughs> well, that was cold. It's not that bad. Rick, um, help him out. Yeah. You know, so he's, a, he's the boss. What am I going to say? You know. Yeah. <laughs> so in '88, we moved to start over. Dad, Dad had, had had a great career. It, it just it. it, it tumbled down and crashed and needed to restart. You know, we had lost the house, we had lost the cars, um, moved here to start over and, and then the start over went really bad honestly as well for, for, for a couple of years and I remember the points where Chantel was the only family member having a job and thank goodness her car payments were still being made so he didn't get repossessed. Lived in really rough rent houses I can remember but you know they were it was neat places and it was it was an interesting and good experience overall. It, it toughened us up and we learned a lot of good lessons but he finally got this opportunity during this time of struggle to go to work for a gentleman who wanted to start a safety consulting company for small businesses like printers, body shops, auto dealers for example. And he went into this knowing nothing, became really good at, this, at, at learning OSHA regulations, EPA regulations and, and built that business up with this gentleman, eventually bought the business from him. and. He saw a need as, as this business was succeeding and doing pretty well, had, had clients across the country. He saw this need for, hey, nobody, nobody has training for an owner of a small business to train himself or one of his people how to keep that company in compliance with OSHA and EPA regulations. You know, how to be my own safety manager, basically, for a small business. So we developed a, a, a program called, called a, basically a Certificate in Environmental and, and OSHA Compliance. And that started our first endeavor in education. And he quickly realized, you know, this isn't doing as well as I hoped as part of this consulting company. And he began to look into starting a school to offer this through. And of course, we thought he was crazy. Oh my gosh, Daniel, we're not. He's not an anchor, not academics. He's he's a consultant of you know from in, in a trade industry. And but he was an entrepreneur. And Dad really, he wasn't scared of taking anything on or doing whatever it took. Extremely hardworking individual. He dealt with a lot of back pain that came from his football days in high school, so he, he'd overcome a lot, lots of health issues. He's one type of people, he, he doesn't miss work because a vertebrae is crushed in his back. He just works with the pain type of situation. And so we knew he would take on whatever, it, it, you know, he could take on anything, and he, and he did it. He, he got a school license, and back then it was just for really that purpose. And the first um, expansion from that initial certificate program was he saw the need, hey, okay, professionals in the safety field, not, not, not a person doing a small business, but a professional in it, a true safety manager, there's like no one offering a degree in this field. It is, the, it is, it is filled with people who got appointed this position and had to learn it. And hey, Mr. Bates, uh, if I can interrupt for one quick second yes. here, Bobby they're, Bobby, they're telling us that they lost your camera, uh, they can hear you. Um, uh, but um, they can't see you, so the suggestion was to uh, uh, log back in, log out, log back in. And um, uh, if you don't mind doing that, uh, that's what Brandon's telling me, that uh, they can hear you, but they can't see you. So if you can log out, log back in. Uh, Mr. Mays, if you would, what I'm going to do uh, while Bobby's doing that is I'm going to share with some of our viewers, and then we'll get right back to, your, to the story, which is awesome, uh, while we're doing that so they can see you. Um, uh, I, I just want to mention something, folks. Um, uh, if you know me, you know how passionate I am about uh, uh, not just education, but but what it does for for you, your life, um, for the people around you, the people that you work with, the people that you work for. Um, you know, one of the things uh, that you're going to see as you're as you're watching this is um, you see different screens popping up behind um, uh, you know Billy and Chantel and, and Mr. Mason and Chief Halton. Um, one of the slides that doesn't pop up there, which I've seen before, is uh, how much they wrap their arms around family. Um, I can tell you firsthand, uh, when I was working on my degree with Columbia Southern University, I'm an alum, uh, right smack dab in the middle of it, my mom came down with terminal cancer. And um, like some other institutions that just won't let up and won't uh, you know, give you a break, uh, they stood by me, they stood by my family, they didn't push. Um, and I, I soon realized what I suspected when I met Kim Plosh, we'll talk about, hopefully about her later, is just how family-based this institution is. There's a lot of people out there just trying to get numbers and trying to work through things. 
Um, they truly do care. They, they, and it's not just about, okay, hurry up and get your degree. It has nothing to do with that. It, it has to do with they want you to be successful. They want you to be successful in life, and, and that means life. That means your job. That means uh, uh, with your family. Um, and I kind of wanted to say that at the very beginning we, we got going, which, with, which was great. This gave me actually technology gave me a, a great opportunity to say that, um, you know, it, it, that's what it meant to me. Columbia Southern, we'll talk more about later, uh, has, has been part of my family. And uh, like I said, uh, we've I got a daughter going through one institution, my son another one when it comes to college. And um, I'll tell you firsthand that nobody cares about their students like Columbia Southern does, and I truly mean that. And I can't tell you how many alums. Brandon, do we have them back? Uh, Brandon, let me know if uh, we're back. I'm looking at them. Uh, we're back now, right, gang? Go ahead. He's good. Okay. So if I could just finish that uh, that statement is um, I can't tell you how many people have echoed that thought, folks, to our listeners out there that have said one of the best experiences was not, you know, the ultimate reward at the end, getting that diploma, but the whole process that people actually um, care about you and, and want to know how you're doing. So um, the technology kind of helped me out there, uh, Mr. Mays. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we got you back. So if you could go ahead and continue, that's awesome. Hey, thank you, and thanks for those kind words. That, that means a lot, by the way. That is, that's what it's all about. Uh, so I think I left off was where um, Dad wanted to start the institution, you know, offer that certificate program through a school, and this is where that 93, Frank, 93 day comes from, is that's when actually got approved to start a university and to offer that program through it. And, uh, and then, so we saw the need for that safety degree. So one of the first programs was to develop a degree in occupational safety and health. And to this day, it's the largest program we offer. And it's a great industry we, we serve. Um, so I still remember very clearly when we went to expand beyond that, those initial with the safety environmental programs, one of the ones first that Dad wanted to offer was, was fire science. Um, I knew nothing of, nothing, of, nothing of it, honestly, not what the market need was. And I remember one of the key reasons he knew, hey, this is a group that is tight-knit, it's family, they, they're passionate about what they do, and those are the kind of groups we want to serve. Because if they're passionate about education and improving in their career, that's an area we can succeed in and, and meet a need. So it was one of our early programs as well. Uh, so initially, back in the early 90s, though, you know, that was the even correspondence day. So, you know, you mentioned internet earlier, and, and Rick did as well. So initially, there was not enough connectivity. You were just AOL and CompuServe, and that was it. So it was you correspondence. Yes, yeah. It was correspondence. The school only had a couple email addresses, and not many people used them whatsoever. And if we've, we, but soon as there was enough demand for online, we were one of the first ones out there and using Blackboard when it had first initially came out, and that was probably late 90s, early 2000, we, we went online when people finally wanted access courses online. Uh, but um, so the school grew. Um, and the, the really the neat thing about it is it's, it's always stayed family owned. Um, it's one, one, one of the different things about us, there is zero investment in the school from any outside group, from any capital venture firm, from anyone else except when my father started it and that was it. So we had, we had um, expanded the programs pretty wide, got accredited in 2001, and in 2005, uh, we had moved to a new 18,000 square foot building here in Orange Beach. And so on that building to this day, uh, we're so excited about it. We're probably at about somewhere between 70 and 100 employees, maybe, you know, staff and faculty uh, that were full time anyway, plus the adjunct faculty. So not a very big institution. Dad came down the hill. Just out of nowhere, he kind of got some kind of a, a lung sickness, uh, not really pneumonia, but something else. And this led into what's called acute respiratory distress syndrome. So between April and September, he was ill, and in September passed away. So, um, of course, I was his number two guy, ran the school. Chantel was heavily involved as well, um, her husband and my mom. And we knew, okay, we, we pick up, we keep going, we, we just we don't let it miss a beat. And I uh, became president then, only at 33, which was really odd. I remember people always, people would introduce me, they always say, Really? You're the president? You sure are young. And I'd go home, my goodness. So, so I grew this beard, beard to look older, by the way. And I, still still think this day. I still think you're young. Yeah, I still, I still am. And um, <laughs> we, the stress kept, hasn't got the, uh, we kept working hard and kept growing the school. And, and we were about six to 7,000 students then. We're at 28,000 right now. And it's you know, kind of like Rick mentioned earlier. The thing, you know, being family all lets us leverage some things 
and and do things different, like the culture. So fire en fire engineering and fi Penwell is family owned, and it allows us to do stuff. But I think yeah. not to interrupt you, but I think what you said we this show we focus on issues and challenges, and we we chose those words very specifically because the fire service is constantly struggling with different issues, whether it's technology or funding or social issues or or whatever. There's a it, it, it comes at us like everyone else. And, and what your story, I think, for firefighters out there that are listening to this today, they might be wondering, why are we here in the history of Columbia Southern? Well, it's about struggle. And it's about looking at that struggle. We, we spoke last night at dinner, not as, a, not as a, a burden or something to get past, but something to learn from and something to build off of, you know, the, 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 the struggles your family went through looking for something to do, most of them, oh, it's the end, we need to just give it up. And no, the, the, there, there's something out there that you're meant to find. And, and, and when you're taking college, and whether you're at Columbia Southern or whatever institution you're, you're going to, there's always that point where people feel like they just want to give up, or I, I can't do this anymore, I don't have the time. Well. Push through that because that's what really you, your dad pushed through that, and then when you lost your dad, you pushed through that that's rather right. than give up, and that's what makes the story of this college so important to the fire service. Is that you could have said, "Well, dad's gone, and it was really his thing, and I'm not a I'm not a college. I'm only 33, and who am I?" No, you know, there's some young firefighter out there who's taking fire science online. And, and he's got a paper due, and the kid, I got to get the kid, I got to, the, the, Tommy's got to go to soccer, and Julie's got to go to ballet, and, you know, I really should be taking overtime shifts, and no, push through, because at the other side, there's so much more opportunity for the educated, uh, you know, you, you, especially in the fire service. It's so important. I think know. maybe a, a similarity to this is when a department suffers a line of duty death, you have to get back on the rig the next day and make that department better and keep going and being a part of it and being a part of Columbia Southern University and what Dr. Mays meant to this university and with his passing, how Robert and Chantel and, and Tommy and uh, Mrs. Mays have picked up and kept going. They got back on the truck and, and that's a very, it's close to my heart because what I came from. Right, right. It's a, it, it, adversity does not have to defeat you. It can, it, it can define you. It can, it can help you define who you are. And not just in the stoic sense, not just yeah. the, it's, it's the beyond that. It's the, it's the greater good you can do with that education. And one of, the, one of the things we struggle with in the fire service, one of the issues is education. And, and I, I, think that, I think that telling our stories, your story and this university story, helps firefighters to recognize that it's not just us, that people struggle everywhere, whether it's the, the young student that, Great story about the Columbia Southern grad who got his associate's degree, his bachelor's degree, his master's degree, and now he's going to Notre Dame Law School. I don't know where he went wrong. He was doing good. <laughs> three out of four ain't bad. That Notre Dame part, I don't know how that snuck in there. And law school, mm, he's just telling people he's taking piano lessons somewhere. But well, and, and Bobby, co coincidentally, um, and Chantel, and I think it wasn't last advisory board meeting, the one before. Uh, you had uh, a couple of us do uh, a couple of video clips for you on not giving up. Uh, Bobby, you talked about it, how the institution pushed forward, but now dealing with the students, actually, you know, taking it a step further was, you know, it was a push for, you know, to don't, don't give up and, and don't give up on your dreams because, um, you know, and I, I, you know my, I'm married to my best friend, and when we first started looking at this, she says, well, you already have the job. Um, Billy, you and I talked about this. You already had the job. What, what, why? And I said, because I have something to prove to myself. Um, I have something to prove to myself. And, and not only does, we could talk about that all day, how an education expands your horizon, um, uh, you know, in, in life in general. Um, this, I don't know, I don't know if you call it self esteem, the self confidence, the self satisfaction. I don't know what, I can't even put my finger on how great it was, but it was something I, I had to prove. Um, but so the message was to a lot of people, Bobby, back then was don't give up. Because so many people start, and we've all got competing demands, family, jobs, everything. Um, the, one of the great things about God, I keep sounding like a commercial, Billy, um, about CSU is 
they're extremely patient with you, but it's an it's an it's a, a college, it's a university that allows you to fit it into your into your lifestyle. Um, uh, where the other way you have to adjust everything. The other way, you know what I'm saying? There's so many people that have started families, started things, uh, uh, you know, everything going on in their life that they, they don't have the time, uh, again, not to diss at all, a, a brick and mortar institution away from there because those are all great too. It, it just appeals to so many different people that, that want that, you know, they want they want that dream. They want to grab all that dream. So that was the message was not to give up. And I just want to tie that directly to what you're saying about how, you know, their dad and everybody pushed forward, Bobby. Um, same thing goes, you know, when we talk to the students is don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on what you start out doing. You know, there are people you can talk to. There are people that can give you that, whether you want to call it a rah-rah talk or that confidence ability to keep you going because when it's all said and done, uh, the reward is incredible. So I just wanted to throw that on there too if I could. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But, uh, no, it's uh, a hangout, man. That's what that's the whole idea is to interrupt each other. So, you know, Dad... Um, he was a big fan of Zig Ziglar. I don't know if you've ever heard sure. of Zig Ziglar. Yeah, sure. but, um, and that's what really pushed him to do more and better was, was, was having that in him, knowing that you made to make the decision that you could do it, have your mind in it, and focus on the right things, and know you could overcome. And that's one of some great things Zig Ziglar taught him. And he lived it. Um, again, he under, he, nothing came easy for him ever. I don't remember anything ever coming easy. And he would push through and work. And just, you know, when you do what other people want and go beyond and work harder, um, this is like I think what we've done here, you know, you will eventually break through and succeed. And Dad, that is a testament to that, what he did. He, he couldn't over, under, under, overcome that urge and the last thing, but, but he, he worked hard. It was nine months he was in the hospital before he gave up. Wow. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it's so important for the fire service, I think, to, to hear your dad's story, your story, the school story. But Chantel's got something to add, too. And every firefighters out there are wondering when we're going to bring you in. So the, the strong, silent type. Watch out for those quiet types. They'll, they'll, they'll sneak up on you. Why don't you tell folks your story and what you do here and okay. what your view on the fire service and education are? Well, I love the fire service. Uh, actually, when we uh, launched the fire, fire science degree, I thought I picked that degree to go after because I wanted to see if I could get fire departments to partner with Columbia Southern University and get a 10% discount uh, per uh, student and, and then their spouse and children, whatever. And so I said, you know, the fire service is the easiest to talk to because I, I called other different groups and like, God, they're not that nice. But firefighters just they're great. They, they act like us. They're real people, real things going on, real lives. And I started cold calling. I, I printed out a list of every fire department state of Alabama. I started calling and say, hey, you know, we're family owned. Uh, we can relate. We want to help you. And that is my first taste of getting to know a firefighter. And I feel like we just fit right in. I think you do too. And, and I love pushing people forward. I love. Um, Education, helping firefighters get educated so they'll be um, smarter. They'll have that, that that status. You know, education just gives you that status you need. It helps you. It helps you talk to city councils and as firefighters, you know, they're important people. And being educated is just another rung on the ladder for them. And so, um, I, I love the thought of putting education in and making it a part of the firefighters' life. It, it can be part of their legacy. Education should be a part of everybody's legacy. You know. Well, and I think that Chantel just said, reminded me of a great story, and, and you've probably heard this one. Um, when, when Admiral Stockdale, he was shot down, at the time he was shot down, he was a captain, I believe. When he was shot down over Vietnam, it was early in the war, I believe it was 68 or 66. He was a prisoner for, I think, almost, almost eight or ten years. He was the, the highest ranking and longest, I think one of the longest uh, serving prisoners of war during the Vietnam War. And when you're a prisoner of war, they take away everything. But they couldn't take away what he had here. And he had been a philosophy student. The Admiral had been a philosophy student. And he went right back into thinking about the Stoics, um, who were uh, some of Aristotle's students. And uh, there was a, one branch of, of, of Aristotle's thought that the students called the Stoics. And he dropped back into that mentality. Is that how would the Stoics interpret his situation? And that's what helped him to survive that event, maintain his dignity, maintain his honor, his respect. And not only that, he managed to, to supervise 
all of the other prisoners, while in probably the most barbaric uh, circumstances you could imagine, because he had this education that had nothing to do with being a fighter pilot, had nothing to do with the yeah. Navy or anything else. But that, that's what gave him that indomitable spirit. It's what made him unbreakable. You know, the modern term now that people are using from the, the great movie about uh, uh, Lou uh, Zam, Zambrini. Zam, what's the... Oh, uh, broke, broke. Bro unbroken. Uh, uh, Lou, what was Lou's last name, Ricky? I'm trying to remember. It's an incredible story. It's a great story. The sad thing about the movie, if you've seen the movie, is that the real message of his book, Unbroken, is the last three chapters, but Angelina Jolie decided to stop at chapter 30. The last three chapters are the best parts because it's where he comes to Jesus and at a Billy Graham revival, which is just fantastic. Uh, yeah. If you haven't read it, you want to read Unbroken. But I think that, again, it was his education. That, 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 you know, there was a big part of it. It was his religious upbringing that he didn't know that was even working in the background all the time that made him unbreakable. It wasn't his training as an Olympic athlete or, or any of that. And, and for, for the Admiral, it was the same thing. You, you said it, it makes you stronger. It really does. It's an education, and that's why with Fire Rescue Magazine, we made it an education magazine. It's, it's not a training magazine. It's an educational magazine. Because it's you, you have to know the whys of life. You know that, that that's so important. Why do we do this? Why why does this matter? Why do these people think that way? Well, and Bobby, one one of the things, and uh, uh, I think it's Louis Louis uh, Louis Zamper. I'm not going to say Zamperini. 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 Um, but one one of the things you you said, I, I and I know I mentioned this to Billy before. Um, in our many discussions is I had a, a friend of mine that was a professor and you know one of the things that he had talked about is I, I, how many times students come up and say why well, I had to take that math class? I'm not going to use that in real life and I'm not going to use that in real life why am I taking this class in real life and I'll never forget the expression Billy you, you probably remember we did our interview together he, he made his he made his kind of face pooch out a little bit and he said because it's called an education and he says the whole point <laughs> is to expand your horizon, you know, I keep saying this, expand, you just said it, is, I'll tell you, the, the fire stuff, uh, that part of the degree, I, I was having a ball with that. My biggest challenge was to keep my, my uh, <laughs> some of my things in the amount of uh, words you're supposed to use, but anyway, um, was, I was fascinated with some of the other areas that I was like, I wasn't looking forward to, and I've been enjoying them, because it was, it, I don't know, it, it's like people who choose to read, whether you do it on a Kindle or you do a book in your hand or whatever. It, it just makes life better. It opens up so many you know, doors in your mind, I guess it will. And that was funny when he said, he goes, it's called an education. And, and that's what we're trying to do is, is bring you so many different areas, so many different things. Um, Chantel, you mentioned it. Um, you know, when it comes to firefighters, as you work up through the careers, dealing with city councils, with budgets, with justifying um, projects and needs, um, especially when, when there's budget cuts. I mean, if you want to go in and put up a good fight against, you know, uh, God love them, our, our, our brothers and sisters in blue law enforcement, when it comes to funding and keeping your positions, you better be ready. You better be you better be ready to be able to go in there and hold a conversation in an educated manner. It doesn't mean that people don't have it. Our dummies, and though I hate that word, you know, they're not. It doesn't mean it at all. It just prepares you better and it gives you kind of it fills up the, 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 the briefcase, if you will, and you walk in. Instead of, you know, you open it up and there's pencils and a sandwich in there like some people did all the time. They're going downtown. You open it up and you've got so many different folders to pull stuff out to justify your argument, to justify your cause. You know, I know it's helped a lot of people on the labor side, Bobby, when it comes to negotiating contracts. And, and I know a lot of volunteer fire departments that have used it when it comes to their charters and changing things. So, it, it, I mean, oh, my goodness, there's so many different ways so many different things this affects uh, when it comes to, <clears throat> to, again, broadening your knowledge base and being able to, you know, put up a good uh, stance, a good, a good statement, if you will. Well, and to, uh, two, of the, two of the most powerful voices in the fire service right now aren't fire chiefs. They're physicists. They're engineers. They're the men, men and women that are working at NIST and UL and and Factory Mutual and other places that are doing research on fire behavior and they're educated people. They're people that got their degrees in engineering or uh, and, and, and look at the difference they're making right now for the fire service. 
you know, and it, it, it's it's so important to be a well-rounded person. And it, the neat thing about today is if you missed that opportunity, if, if when you left high school, your circumstances may have been like Chantal and Robert's family were, couldn't afford to go to college. Well, your circumstances are going to change. Things are going to improve. And now maybe you have children, you can't go back physically to some brick and mortar building. But heck, I don't know anybody who doesn't have a computer. Well, actually, that's not true. I do know somebody, but he's annoying. And but I'm just now he knows it. And, and, and I know he's not watching because this is online. So I can say, it. heck, I can name him. But, but he sends me letters on, on, on a yellow tablet, long letters. And I write them back on yellow tablet. But, <laughs> but that being said, you know, today you're not confined to having to attend you know, for six months or not being able to work, which is so liberating. And even if you have your degree, say you got your bachelor's you know, years ago and joined the fire service, you can go back and get your master's. You can get your PhD. You can, you can get two master's. You can pursue you know, uh, whatever you want to pursue. Yeah. And, and there's life after the fire service. I mean. You know, for a lot of us, we retire young. Uh, you know, and and the, what are you going to do then? Well, you may want to be an accountant. You know, you may want to, and you could help guys and gals do their taxes in the fire service. You may want to be a, a, a dental hygienist. You may want to be a, a lawyer, like the, the chief that uh, from near Notre Dame. You're the fellow we were talking about earlier. Indiana. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, it, the fire service is a great and honorable career, but for for many of us. Injury, age, makes us unable to function. I think also education is engaging. And, and being a recent graduate with my bachelor's, I said, I want to take a couple months off. i got to have a breather. Well, it, I think I was off maybe three weeks, and I've enrolled in my MBA program. And you just get caught up in it because once you achieve something, you want to keep going. And I've had so many people that I've met with in the fire service say, yeah, I just want to get my bachelor's and get done. And next thing you know, Next time you see them at FDIC the next year, hey, I'm in my master's program. Well, hey, I remember last year you were stopping. Yeah, I figured I'd keep going since I'm in the routine. And that's the way it is. And we have so yeah. many students with us that just keep going. And and um, the individual uh, that we spoke of in, in Indiana who's a chief, I mean, all the way, associate, bachelor's, master's, keeps on going. And all three of them from CSU. So. Well, and I think one of the surprises for people, for some people, is um, – you know, and, I, and CSU has always been classy, and they've never, I've never heard them say anything negative about a brick and mortar institution, if you will, or whatever. They've always been classy. They've just, you know, when other people are, you know, firing missiles at each other, they've never done that. And and I, I can tell you firsthand why I know because I know, uh, you know, I, I know Chantel and I know Robert, and I know uh, that 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 what good Christians they are. And yes, I said that, and I don't care what anybody else thinks. I think that's awesome. And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, Mr. Mays, you, you've said that several times before about the institution and, and the beliefs and the standing, the core values uh, that, that you have. But a lot of people, I think, sometimes sit down and think, well, I'm going to go. That's why I've warned people. I've had, I can't tell you how many folks have asked me over the past several years now. I mean, every week someone's asked me. And, uh, and I always point them to your folks when it comes to that advice. What I tell them is uh, don't sit down at the computer and think, well, I'm just going to, you know, puts around a little bit and do this and this. It, 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 it's hard work. You have to be dedicated. You have to be willing to sit down and make the time. Um, you know, I think sometimes people look at an online degree as, well, I'm just going to go in there, you know, a little bit here and there, take a couple tests, do some things, and that's not it. it that not, not just the studying you have to do away from the computer, but it's, it's a great program, but it, it takes some work. And I think sometimes uh, a couple of people, I, I've always warned them, if you think you're going to sit down and, go to the firehouse every third day or once in a while and get on there, that's not going to make it. You have to be dedicated to this no different than you were any other facility you were going to be attending. Um, again, the reward's incredible, but it's there's a lot more to it than just sitting down. It's, I mean, the papers, the studying, the things you have to do, uh, that, that makes it an education. You know, I'm, uh, I just always send that message to people that, you know, this is an incredible. How, how, many, how many students, I may have missed that earlier when we were going off, um, CSU is up to how many now? Yeah, 28, 29,000 active students it fluctuates in, this, in different months of the year. That's, a, that's incredible. This is this is a, a, a getting to be a large, huge, if you will, institution, yet they still keep those um, those values and those ties um, 
Uh, I, told, I told Billy, my, I know for a fact that my son was going to a major uh, university. He didn't get a fraction of the one-on-one, -on -one, the help, uh, the stuff that he needed or that should have been there that Columbia Southern is able. I don't know how you guys do it, to be honest, that you do for so many people. But um, uh, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. You know what I'd like to do is, uh, and I'll tell my story, but, but I'd like to everybody kind of share what, and, and even in, uh, I want Chantel and, and Robert to share too, with your education, what was the one time in your life where your education really paid off in a meaningful way? And for me, it's an interesting story. I was on an airplane, and uh, I, I had my, I, I did not go to Columbia Southern. I went to Harvard on the Rio Grande, otherwise known as the University of New Mexico. Um, where, <laughs> You're laughing. I love it. Harvard on the Rio Grande. That's, that's what it's commonly known as, right? So um, I was on an airplane. And I had my, my school ring on, which I'm very proud of. And a lady was sitting next to me, and she said, uh, what do you do? You know how people will on an airplane. I said, oh, I'm a firefighter. She said, oh, is, is that a, it, what's, the, what's the, your ring for? I said, um, that's where I went to college. It's my college ring. And she goes, oh, I thought you said you were a firefighter. And I said, why, yes, I am. And she said, well, why did you go to college? You know, to, and I said, well, and, and tr truth be known, John O'Hagan, back in the FDNY years ago, had a, a rule that said you had to have a college degree in order to be an officer, which was one of my motivations. But then I sat there and I thought for a minute to talk to her, and oddly enough, what came to mind during the conversation with her, Billy, was I spoke to her about the importance of public safety education. I said, what we do technically is important, but what we do in terms of educating the public about fire safety is, is critical because the, the best fire I've ever been to is the one that didn't happen. So I went into that whole talk about fire safety and education and candles and sprinklers, and, and we're having that great debate today in the fire service. How do we educate people? Smoke detectors are still a huge issue. How do we get people to embrace smoke detectors and get them in every floor of their homes? because we go to fire to fire and they're not there or they're not working. And, and then sprinklers, how do we get people to embrace, you know, for new construction to put sprinklers in? It's the right time to do it. It's the easiest time to do it. It's the most affordable time to do it. And, and that's all about education, being able to explain those things. And it, and it has very little to do with structural firefighting. But it had everything to do with my educational skills that I'd learned about public speaking, that I'd learned about physics, that I'd learned about economics, that I'd learned about courses that had nothing really specifically to do with firefighting, but a little bit of economics with a little bit of social theory, with a little bit of public speaking, enabled me to sit there. And so while I'm talking to this lady, I'm, I'm, we're getting kind of you know ready to, to land. And people behind us go, oh, I can't believe we're landing. That's a, that's a really, that's really interesting stuff. And, I look over my shoulder, and it was like you know, it was like a it was like a classroom had developed on an airplane, you know, and and that was like for me. I said, that's why education matters. Not, you know, not for me just to get ahead, or God forbid, I end up in prison like Admiral Stockdale, which I'm sure there's people in the government who like to do that. <laughs> but the, you know, it, it was to be able to share our message with with regular folks. So, in your work as the vice president here, and, and doing what you do. Can you think of a time when your education really came through in, in just kind of a meaningful way for you? Well, you know, I'm out about all the time, so it's always good to have that under your belt education. But I think the thing that it, there's no really certain time. I'm still an, a student now. I'm an online student. Oh, wow. And yes, education is not easy, but I want to encourage you. You have to push through. There's been times where I I'd like to be her professor. <laughs> I, I had to submit my paper at, right before 12, and we were on vacation with the family, and I looked at Robert, and the whole thing deleted, you know. And I'm crying. I'm, I'm never going to do this again. And Robert said, oh, we can help you. And so you got these moments where you're going to go through hard times, but you know what? You've got to go after your education. And so, I, again, I'm still a student now, and you know the one thing it does for me, and for an adult learner, learner, it gives you so much confidence in yourself. It, it, it rounds you out as a total person. And I'll never forget a friend of ours came and got his degree here and I saw him when he got his associate. He kind of, he didn't stand as tall and proud. You know, he was shy and then he came back and got his bachelor's degree. 
and he's a different person. Wow. Education changed his life as a firefighter. He got, uh, I think he's promoted battalion chief, but what it did that I noticed is it changed his stature. It changed who he was. He was a proud parent to his children. He said, my family didn't think I could get educated, but I did. And it gave him stamina to pursue any of his dreams. My Uncle George said good. when I told him I was going to college, he said, that's like throwing perfume on a pig. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, that yeah. would be mine. Okay. So much confidence changes your changes your 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 perception of yourself. Yeah, and you go in meetings and you can hold your head high and you feel very uh, you know, sure of yourself. Somebody throws out a word like onomatopoeia and you actually know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah awesome. When we first got accredited back in, or we're going through that process, one of the things that came up was that Dad had to develop a plan of succession, and the cutter wanted to know, okay, if something happens. Who's going to take over you? Well, now I was the guy that ran the operations, but I didn't have the, I didn't have a master's degree, so that put me on a track to go to school so that I would be prepared. And I, I needed to enroll somewhere else, so I went to Capella, um, great school, still think highly of it, and they they have a great reputation. It took me three years, one course at a time, twelve week courses. This is the best I could do. I only took one quarter off because we were having a child, and uh, just stayed at it. It was hard. I struggled in every course. None of it came easy. Papers were a nightmare. And I'll, I'll never forget getting an email from my professor by mistake. You're really encouraging people to sign yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying it's, it's, it is hard, like we've talked about. And it's the truth, you know. I'll never, forget you know getting an, I'll never forget getting an email from my professor that was sent to like one of her colleagues. And it was basically saying, can you believe I got a paper this bad? And it was mine. So I, I, that took me down a notch, and I replied back, I don't think you meant this for me. And oh, God, she was apologetic. But I, by the time I actually submitted my final paper that class, it was good. Of course, I think she would have given me good no matter what after doing that. <laughs> anyway, you know where to go but up. Yeah, <laughs> really. So when Dad passed away, though, I had done that master's. And, and that was, if I had not had that, that would have been problematic, definitely. So that was a great, that was a good thing. You know, I think like you mentioned, you know, um, I do a lot of work in strategic planning. Of course, leadership skills are huge, and finance and budgeting, all things that that degree helped further my knowledge in. But I went beyond that now, but it definitely gave a lot of good groundwork to help me understand it a lot better than most. So, it, uh, I, you know, everyday life and my job. Billy, anything else? I think mine was, uh, for whatever reason, I always wanted to go to the executive pharmacy program. And knowing you had to have a degree, there was a degree requirement to get into that. Uh, my goal, and, and I finished my uh, associate's degree when I was with the state fire marshal's office. At that time, that was the requirement to get in. And I just right after that, become the fire chief in Riverdale. And having my degree was my key to get into the EFO. Being a fire chief and having my associates uh, really opened that door for me. So. You know, that was a dream that I wanted to do. I always wanted to go to the executive fire officer program. I watched other fire chiefs that were EFO grads, and it meant something that was credential to me. So having the degree is what allowed me to get into that. Outstanding. I, I, I'm a firm believer, obviously, I repurposed an entire magazine to cover education, which I think is critical. You cannot, it's not just training in the fire service. What are some of the core, Ricky, you, you've been through your degree, and we've got Scott in the room with us, Scott Brown. So bring, bring it, come on, jump in here with us, Scott. Bobby, let, me, let me throw this out there. A um, couple quick questions if you, for some of our viewers. Um, yeah. And this one's been asked a bunch of times. I always refer them to Kim, Chantel, Billy, or whatever. Um, uh, but uh, Heath, Heath Smith was curious. He's, he's going to be graduating with his bachelor's from CSU and wants to pursue his, his, his master's. And he says, how do you, how do you deal with um, the questions or, you know, the whole regarding accreditation, um, uh, you know, uh, you know the, whole, the whole difference between where CSU is at with the, the, the TCA and so on and so forth. You know, some of the questions that, that people come up with, are they accredited? Well, yeah, I, I always explain, you know, from my end what I know about it. But that was his question was, how, to, how do you combat, how do you... You know, when the people ask those questions, you know, um, what, what do you what do you say to them? So the national and regional discussion. Um, so both both um, 
So the Department of Education recognizes both type of creditors equally. The really main difference is their scope and their and their focus. Um, the regionals, of course, focus on a region of different type of schools in those regions. Nationals usually focus on different type of institutions, no matter where they are located. Um, regionals will tend to focus a lot on governance, decision making, and um, how should I say it? Uh, kind of structure and faculty and where a national will go down not as much worried about oh is your board independent or not you know they're more worried. they get down to the course level and are your we're going to have an outside reviewer um, from probably a traditional school review a sampling of your courses and make sure they're good because we don't just because your faculty are qualified we're not going to go by that we want to see and have someone else a third party look at it so Honestly, both are very rigorous processes. I, I have been through both. You know, we own Water College as well, so I've seen both types. Uh, we're very familiar with the SACs as well, so I've the experience with two regionals and a national. And there's definitely not really one harder or easier than the other, just different. They each focus on different things that's important to them. And all of them focus on things like faculty qualifications and things of that nature. It's just they go into different areas more and deeper in different ways. But um, so a lot of the, the discrepancy is a lot of people don't understand that national accreditation is very relevant for accrediting degree programs and DEAC even accredits up to the first professional and JD level for example uh, and the DBA program of course as well but they don't they, there's, there's kind of, sort of the old thought that okay traditional schools the big brick and more the ones we think of are region accredited therefore that's kind of the gold standard and so what this ends up in the end leading to is really no difference, I think, on quality at the institution level because all our creditors are meeting the same Department of Education and in most cases the Council on Higher Education Accreditation Standards, right? The AC is approved by both. You have to go through both those hurdles. Um, it comes down to transferability in the end in some cases where a, you know, when you come from an actual accredited school, there is more transfer options than you're ever going to be able to utilize, like if you graduate from CSU. However, if you have a specific place you want to go, we highly encourage you to check because that may be one of those schools that wants regional accreditation only. And that's really kind of then what it comes down to. Will they are both going to be quality degrees and will this meet your need? Are you trying to go somewhere else? Are you trying to get some certain credentials somewhere? Well, make sure that our degree or any national credit school or even a regional credit school is going to take it. Um, and you know we have students of course that even have pro problems as you've even heard that you know transferring from a junior college which is region accredited to a region accredited to a traditional four-year school is sometimes difficult because that's perception. Four-year school is better, got better credentialed faculty and tenured faculty. The junior college is using people that are uh, practitioners like fire chiefs for example so you know it can't be as good, but it's not true. It is, and fire chiefs are great instructors, just like any practitioner is, because they have that real world knowledge. Um, so I think it's about what what are you using it for, and where you know will it work for what you want to do? Now CSU is seeking regional accreditation as well as keeping DEAC. It's a long process. Um, reason we're doing that is not because we don't love DEAC. But we know if we can further our, if we can further help our students and open up more doors, we further achieve our mission. So we will work to to add that to our our list of accreditation as well if it helps our students more. We're in the process of that now. Well, and I tell people all the time, like anything else, I don't care where you want to go to school. You need to do your homework when it comes to financial aid, when it comes to accreditation, when it comes to whatever. Just like you said, uh, Mr. Mays, it's it's about what do you what are you looking to do and where are you looking to apply it. Uh, when, when, it, when it comes to it, I'll, I'll tell you firsthand, my, my son just went through this, Bobby, you know he's in the Navy. Um, he went to transfer classes and credits from a, you know, I'll, I'll say one of the biggest colleges in Texas to a uh, university in Texas to one of the biggest universities in Illinois and Chicago. And I was amazed when he went from there to there and about two or three others, how many classes didn't transfer, period. Forget the fact, you know, you, you know I mean, it was it was... Yeah, you know, you would think, well, just because, and that's what I think a lot of people think, just because I go to this particular university and it's accredited this way, um, that everything's going to transfer when I go to the, and that didn't happen. He was like, I can't believe that they're giving me like 
52, 60, this one's giving me 42, 48, and it's the same, you know, so so there's kind of a wake-up call for a lot of people. Like you said, when it comes, do your homework where you want to go because he had difficulty just doing that, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. no matter what the accreditation is or where you're at, you need to know where you're going and what you're going to use it for and make sure it's it's, it's going to work, but um, it's up to the receiving institution, yeah. Yeah. But in, usually when it's not accepted, normally it's it's a, it's really a misconception. It's uninformed. Usually there's not a good reason anyone doesn't accept the national accredited credits, courses, or degree. It's just an old school mentality that is slowly getting better and better. I think, by the way. Absolutely. And and one more before we move on, because um, I know we we've got like ten minutes left uh, on the air. But um, and I don't know if this moves us into a totally different direction. I had two different people ask. Um, and I guess what I just wrote in my notes was beyond the degree, other stuff. I know, you know, CSU, I mean, we, I know we did a company officer Academy ability and we've had tremendous success uh, both when we work with CSU and away from there, but there are so many areas I know away from those working on that particular, you know, that I don't think people are even aware of. I mean, if you, if you, you can get lost in a good way at Columbia Southern's uh, website looking at the different programs and the things they offer to you. Um, a couple of people, two different people asked, so beyond the degree, you know, what, what is CSU uh, doing uh, program-wise, programs-wise? So now I'll let you talk about this. So you want to talk about the fire offerings, sure. by the way? <laughs> sure. A minute. And Columbia Southern University is proud to say that we're a regional training center for the Alabama Fire College. We just recently, the last year, had a grand opening of our new continuing education building, uh, and, and a good part of that was dedicated to the Alabama Fire College in which we host trainings down here from Chief uh, Fire Officer 2, 3, 4, uh, Instructor, uh, Inspector, Investigator, um, and obviously with uh, Chief Lasky and Chief Salka, we do the Company Officer Academy. We have the Chief Brunacini Leadership Retreat that we offer a couple times a year. We've actually conducted 18 of those retreats around the country. Um, we're part of uh, many associations. We, we do a couple different conferences we work with. I know this is kind of competition for, for Bobby, but it's not necessarily. Uh, but we work with uh, the Mid-States Fire Conference, uh, and we're proud to be a, a proud partner of the Alabama Association of Fire Chiefs. <laughs> this guy. Uh, also, we can also be part Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, uh, Let's keep going. And uh, we, we actually help put different shows together, and uh, this week we'll be in the Southeastern Association of Fire Chiefs because it's a, a joint conference on the Alabama Fire College for Alabama Fire Chiefs. So we help put the educational program together on that. So uh, that's just some of the things on the fire side. But we also do a lot on criminal justice. Uh, we have female tactical training uh, for law enforcement officers. We do uh, fire investigation or, or CIS with the Foley Forensic Seminar, which was uh, about fire investigations and crime studies. So. We do a lot of uh, unique things, and then I think we got some others that you would talk about. You covered most. More. We have a. Are we having a bad echo? Can you hear that? I'm sorry. We say that again. I'm an echo. Are you right now? No, we're we're pretty good. If I could get uh, maybe Billy and Chantel to squeeze in a little bit closer to you guys, um, because <laughs> when we start talking, we kind of wave around. We're only seeing half the yet, but um, but yeah, that echo's not that bad. It really isn't. Yeah, okay. You hear it just fine. So the only thing really to add, I think we did cover the spectrum, but we have a continuing education website, and that will list these different trainings and things we're doing. But we do like to offer training in the areas of our programs. You know, if we serve the fire industry, for example, we're going to have training in that area as well. Criminal justice, uh, occupational safety, health, things that help our us. And so that continuing education department is is always adding different things. So this this website stays up to date on what and they do and they do mostly a lot of face to face offerings. It shows what we're doing face to face and where it's going to be at, either here or across the country. Well and that, 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 that was a great question real quick. I'm sorry, Bobby, by by uh, uh, Robert and by Cynthia, because they're the ones that were asking and I, I'm always amazed at just what you know uh, what we do with, at CSU. I always say beyond the degree, if you will, you know, when it's, we talk about I mean I've always heard. I've heard so much about the fire officer one and the two programs of that, and uh, great stuff. But go ahead, Bobby. I'm sorry, but well, and, and Robert and Chantel and I were visiting last night. You know, when you talk about beyond the degree or beyond the institution, whether you're at CSU or you're wherever you are, there's other things out there where you can get education. It's about the pursuit of excellence in your life, and uh, to, to steal from the Acura people, 
the relentless pursuit of perfection, you're never going to get there. But we were speaking last night about Stanley McChrystal's uh, leadership program and and then the mindfulness institutes and you know e education is important at all aspects of your life and and we've got Scott just joined us if you're wondering who it is over my shoulder here this handsome gentleman who's who's dressed for success I, I didn't get the memo about the jackets <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> Billy told me it was polos yeah I'm sorry yeah. hey, I, I wore my orange beach Chantel shirt she, Chantel oh, told me there you go oh, I, there, there's where I was going. <laughs> You're overdressed. There you go. So, uh, real quick, I want to bring Scott in real quick. We've got we've got some time left. We can go a little a little bit longer if you can stay with us. Because uh, Scott just published a great article with us, which was basically your dissertation. That's correct. And so, if you're out there and you're listening to this, uh, you know, one of the things you can do while you're going through your education is you can publish your education, and share it with the rest of the class. Exactly right. Tell us your experience. Well, the experience was really, uh, I had to have this passion. My dissertation is about firefighting. We've lost so many firefighters over the years, and 100 a year for a number of decades. I'm trying to figure out accountability. How does that happen? What are we doing to fix it? Millions of dollars being spent by uh, national union, millions of dollars being spent trying to figure out what are all these factors. Uh, and, and so as I started researching and figuring out these pieces, um, it was something that I really had the passion for. I wanted to make a difference in the fire service. We all do. We, we, try, to, we try to find that footprint where we can have an influence and, and make that difference and maybe stop the change, stop the, the, the responses or these actions. Uh, and so that's what that was about. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to finish that up and, and talk with Chief Holt. I didn't know I'd call you Chief, did you? And, uh, uh, but the fact is, mentor of mine, as, as uh, I seem to collect a lot of mentors and and trying to get that word out there and what we can do about it and make that difference because it, it persists. So that, that's what that experience has been about. I've had the opportunity to speak at a number of your conferences and in around trying to trying to get the word out. Uh, well, you, 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 brought up something, you brought up something very important that I think connects the whole CSU to the student and beyond is mentor. And Bobby, you and I have asked that in classes we've done. Bobby teaches with us at the Company Officer Academy quite often when, we do the, when we're all there together. And it almost backfired on us once, Bobby. If you remember, we went around the room saying, okay, who is your mentor or who are your mentors? And people, about two-thirds of the room, had this bewildered look. And I, and I can't imagine going through life in general without a mentor, whether it's your mom or dad or brother or sister or whatever, a friend, let alone somebody that's just been, I'm very brief, for partial fire service. So you just mentioned the whole mentoring thing. Um, th that, that's what I found. I mean, you, you're talking about being able to grab a hold of people that will stay with you long after you graduate um, as mentors if you follow them you watch what they're doing you watch some of the great stuff that Billy's doing that he's putting out uh, and, and you know and not just you know Twitter but in his articles and other things in his programs you know you know what I'm saying there's so many different people look around that room the mentoring part of it is just huge and I think that's I think that sometimes people forget about when it comes to doing what we've been talking about all day here you know, and I'd like to add on to that that it, it's you don't have to have one mentor. There's many mentors. You're getting going right. through. There's, there's plenty of pieces, and that mentor I like to bring in is someone that really cares about you, and and says the truth to you, and lets you know this is acceptable, not acceptable, and and then I guess the hard part would be to listen, right? So, uh, and then on the flip side of that, uh, you get that opportunity to mentor others, and you're leading by example. If you're going to school and uh, you're a lifelong learner. Everyone's watching. We know that, and uh, and so you can be that influence. You can really make a difference without even knowing you're making a difference. You know, one of the unique things that, that that I get to do is be a part of Columbia Southern University, but also continue to be a part of the fire service. When you go to FDIC and, and other conferences, but especially FDIC, is there are other conferences. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, no, there is. It, it's like a family reunion, and it's because of the mentors, it's because of the friendships. And Robert Chantel have asked me to to build other programs like we have in fire, and a lot of it's just come naturally, because I think all of us can uh, on the fire side can attest to this a brother and sisterhood that's unlike any other industry. And we kind of mentor each other. We're a part of each other's lives, and we pay attention. We care about how each other's doing, and how our health is, and how our family is. And and unbeknown, you become a mentor to somebody, or they become a mentor to you, and you don't even know it. So a lot of times, people may ask, "Well, who is your mentor?" 
and they really don't even know who the individual is, but somebody's touched their life. Well, and, and I think particularly for firefighters, and, and Chantel spoke earlier about how when she met us we were so friendly and engaging. There are, there are a lot of children out there, young people, that look to the fire service, rightfully so, as, as a place for inspiration and a, and a place for role models and, and, and mentors. And, and even other young firefighters, we look to the older firefighters, and, or we look to promoted firefighters, or we look to accomplished firefighters. And, and Robert and I spoke about that yesterday evening as we were finishing up dinner. If you're one of those people, and I don't care if you've been on the fire department for five years, so you're a five-year fire, or two years, three years, be so careful about what you do, especially in public, with people who look up to you, because that you can fall from grace so quickly. Um, language, uh, inappropriate humor, um, social media. Yeah, inappropriate posting on social media, even anger. You know, occasionally at the fire service, we're very passionate people, and we might be talking about politics or whatever. And you know, well, that gosh darn Donald Trump. I'll just throw him out there. He's the he's the pinata du jour. Who everybody's <laughs> beating up for whatever for his speech yesterday. Well, you don't know that the person sitting next to you isn't a huge fan of Donald Trump. So, you know, doesn't mean you can't say, you know, I, I, I disagree with this. We talked about opinions yesterday, that, you know, that there's a gross misconception in the public today that you have to respect everyone's opinion. No, you don't. Some opinions are just flat out wrong. Hitler, okay, I never respected any of his opinions. Not even the mustache thing. Well, speak, speaking of mustaches, um, uh, and I'm, I'm looking at myself, my little picture here, I, I think we're there, Bobby. I think um, I, I hit Brandon for the time, and um, uh, I, I think we're there. Uh, uh, folks, if you're, if you're looking to get any information, you can find everybody on Twitter uh, that, that you've been listening to. Um, <clears throat> uh, the other thing, too, is uh, you can go to Columbia Sellers' website, and there is just incredible information there. I'll, I'll tell you this, if you want to know, uh, if you're interested, get a hold of me, and I'll tell you. Uh, you can email me, you can tweet, whatever you want to do, and I will send you the information on who you need to talk to at CSU to get things done. Bobby, real quick, I think we're, we're done. you have any closing comments? Um, yeah, remember, call for presentations close on Friday. Get your paperwork in. Uh, re remember, education matters. Um, find a place that's comfortable for you. Get registered, get started, and don't give up. Outstanding. Outstanding. God bless everybody. Be careful. And uh, God bless. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.